In this video, we're going to learn how to solve inequalities. To be able to do this topic, you already need to be comfortable with solving equations. I have four videos on this topic that you might want to check out first. They are one-step equations, two-step equations, equations with fractions, and equations with unknowns on both sides. Additionally, you might want to check out my video on inequality diagrams. I'll put links to all of these videos in this video's description. Before we begin to solve inequalities, we need to make sure we understand the inequality symbols. We have this symbol here, which means less than, this symbol here, which means greater than, this one, which is less than or equal to, and this one, which is greater than or equal to. This here is an equation because it has an equal sign. To solve this equation, we'd first of all look at this plus 6 here, and then subtract 6 from both sides. On the left hand side, the 6s will cancel, so we have 3x, and on the right hand side, 21, subtract 6 is 15. Then, because of this times 3 here, we would divide both sides by 3. 3x divided by 3 is 1x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So you end up with the solution x equals 5. But this is an equation, and this video is about inequalities. So if we take another copy of that equation, but replace the equal sign with an inequality sign, for example, a less than, this now becomes an inequality. The good news is you solve inequalities in exactly the same way you solve equations. We just need to remember to write the inequality sign rather than an equal sign. So to solve this inequality, we're still going to subtract 6 from both sides. But instead of writing the equal sign, we write the less than sign. On the left hand side, the 6s will still cancel, so we have 3x. And on the right hand side, 21 subtract 6 is still 15. Then we divide both sides by 3. We just need to remember to write the less than sign and not an equal sign. 3x divided by 3 is 1x, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So the solution to the inequality looks really similar to the solution to the equation. The only difference between these two solutions is the equation has an equal sign, whereas the inequality had a less than sign. It also doesn't matter which inequality symbol we use. We could have used a greater than sign, in which case the solution would have been x is greater than 5. Or it could have been a greater than or equal to sign, in which case the solution would be x is greater than or equal to 5. So to solve an inequality, you just solve it like it's an equation, but make sure you write the inequality symbol instead of the equal sign. Let's practice solving some more inequalities. So for this inequality here, we have a negative 3. To deal with this, we're going to add 3 to both sides. On the left hand side, the 3s will cancel, so we have x over 2. And on the right hand side, 4 plus 3 is 7 but we must make sure we write less than or equal to 7, using the inequality symbol and not an equal sign. Then we have this divide by 2 here, so we're going to multiply by 2 on both sides. On the left hand side, the 2s will cancel, so we have x. And on the right hand side, 7 multiplied by 2 is 14. So we have x is less than or equal to 14. Now what does this solution, x is less than or equal to 14, actually mean? It means that x can be any number that's less than 14 or equal to 14. If we take the inequality again, and we choose a number for x that's less than or equal to 14, for example 10, then this inequality should be true. So if we replace the x with a 10, we get 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then 5 subtract 3 is 2, and 2 is less than or equal to 4, so that's true. And watch what happens when we select a number that's not less than or equal to 14. So if we take the inequality again, and we pick a number that's bigger than 14, for example 18, 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 9 subtract 3 is 6. So this says that 6 is less than or equal to 4, but that doesn't make sense because 6 is greater than 4, and that's because we chose a number that was not in our solution. Now it should also be correct if we choose the number 14 itself. So if we take the inequality and replace x with 14, we get 14 divided by 2, which is 7, and 7 subtract 3, which is 4. And it says 4 is less than or equal to 4, which is true, because 4 is equal to 4. So when we get the solution to an inequality, it just means that if you substitute in one of those values, the inequality will be true. Let's solve another inequality. This time we'll have one with unknowns on both sides. We'll start with this 2x here, and we're going to need to subtract 2x from both sides. We just need to make sure that we write the greater than sign in the middle. On the left hand side, we do 5x subtract 2x, which is 3x and then we have subtract 8, and on the right hand side the two x's will cancel, so we just have 4. For the next step we need to deal with this subtract 8 here by adding 8 to both sides. So we write the greater than symbol, 
And on the left hand side, the eights will cancel, so we just have three X. On the right hand side, four plus eight is 12. Finally, we've got this times three here, so we need to divide by three on both sides. We write the greater than symbol, and on the left hand side, three X divided by three is one X, and on the right hand side, 12 divided by three is four. So we get the solution X is greater than four. Sometimes we might get worded questions like this. Work out the smallest integer x for which 2x plus 1 is greater than 12. The first thing we do here is just solve the inequality, so 2x plus 1 is greater than 12. We start with this plus 1 here, so we subtract 1 from both sides. Then we write the greater than symbol. On the left hand side the 1s will cancel, so we have 2x, and on the right hand side 12 subtract 1 is 11. Then because of this 2 here we divide both sides by 2. We write the greater than symbol. And 2x divided by 2 is 1x, and 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. So we end up with the solution x is greater than 5.5. Now for this question, we've been asked to work out the smallest integer for x. An integer is just a whole number. So we need to think of the whole numbers where x is greater than 5.5. So for example, 6, 7, 8, and so on. All of these are integers that are greater than 5.5. But the question asks us for the smallest one of these integers. So for the answer, we pick the smallest one, which is six. Let's try another example like this one. So for this question, we need to work out the largest integer for which this inequality is true. So if we start by solving the inequality, for this one, I would expand out the brackets first. On the left-hand side, seven times x is seven x, and then seven times negative one is negative seven. Then we have less than or equal to 28. Next, we have subtract seven here, so we will add seven to both sides. So we write the inequality symbol less than or equal to. On the left hand side, the plus seven and subtract seven will cancel, so we just have seven x. And on the right hand side, 28 plus seven is 35. Then because of this seven here, we can divide by seven on both sides. We write the less than or equal to symbol. On the left hand side, seven x divided by seven is one x. And on the right hand side, 35 divided by seven is five. So we end up with the solution x is less than or equal to five. So we've been asked for the largest integer this time. So we need to think of all of the whole numbers where x is less than or equal to five. So it could be five or four or three and so on. But they wanted the largest integer this time. So the answer is the largest one from our list, which is five. Sometimes we may have to solve an inequality and then draw the solution on a number line. For example, this one here. Solve the inequality x plus three is greater than one. So to solve this one, we have a plus three here. So we're going to subtract three from both sides. On the left hand side, the threes will cancel, so we have x is greater than, and on the right hand side, one subtract three is negative two. So solving that inequality was quite straightforward. And then for part B, it says to represent your answer to part A on the number line below. In order to do this well, you'll need to have checked my video on inequality diagrams. I'm not going to reteach how to do this now, but it's important that you understand that these two questions are often assessed at the same time. So you'll be given a number line, and we need to represent this inequality onto it. So to do this, we draw a circle above negative two, and then we draw an arrow in the direction of the numbers that we need. So the numbers greater than negative two are to the right. And then we just need to decide if we're shading in this circle or not. Since this is a regular greater than symbol and not greater than or equal to, we're not going to shade in this circle. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And why not try the exam questions in this video's description.